All right. So, when the reason why we stick simple, uh, simple harmonic motion and waves together is because essentially they follow all the same rules. Um, you, could, you saw that as we started to graph like a pendulum swinging or a mass on a spring, a horizontal or vertical spring, they created a, their position in velocity and acceleration graphs all form the shape of a wave, right? You say that, right? Yeah. So that's why we lumped them together. And I had a really hard time. I had caught myself a couple times when we were talking about those shapes and periods and things like that with simple harmonic motion. I would start saying wave, and I'm like, no, we can't say wave because we're not there yet, right? So I, I had a really hard time flipping my brain and saying oscillation instead of wave. Um, but you know, now we, we see that essentially simple harmonic motion does have to do with waves. Um, so we're gonna t what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about waves, right? Just some quick vocabulary. Uh, your perusal reading is on waves, right? Um, and it's a short reading. Um, so we'll start today. We're going to talk about what kind of waves can we look at. You're going to do an investigation to see what affects wave period and things like that, okay? Wait, how many comments did you first do? Three? Wait, four. All right. So... When we start with this, when we start talking about a wave, right, a wave is a disturbance. Okay? So a wave is just, it's caused by a disturbance. Okay? So a wave is caused by a disturbance. That means something has to happen where you cause a change in the position of something, and there's a restoring force that brings that object back. Okay? Um, if you toss a stone into a lake or into a pond, right, that stone applying force or hitting the water molecules is, your dis is the disturbance. Okay? And that disturbance then causes a chain reaction of all the other molecules that it's connected to to also move up and down. Okay? Does that make sense? Because right? you think about really any object, right, the molecules, are, especially in solids and liquids, are linked together. So if one moves, those, those bonds then move and cause the other molecules to also move with it down the line. Okay? So waves are caused by some sort of disturbance. Okay? And the really interesting thing, and it's hard to wrap your head around, is that waves transfer energy. Okay? They transfer energy, so... The energy, when you see a wave dispersing, right, whether it's an ocean wave, whether it's a ripple in a pond, whatever it may be, it's the energy, not that you, like, you see, but it, that's what's causing the wave to propagate or to move. Right? When, we talk, when we talk about waves, when we talk about waves moving, we use the word propagate. That means that a wave is moving okay, or the disturbance is moving. They transfer the energy, but what they don't do is cause the object or the particle to move, or to, to travel. Let me uh, fix that. Okay? <laughs> so, again, what you would see, and I wish I could, I, there's, things there, but I can't like just do like an animation on this quickly. But when you cause a disturbance, right, what you would see is, you see maybe this particle, right? And when you cause a disturbance, let's say you have a rock and it hits this particle. Don't do that. Here we go. Right? I just want to use the move. Why well, won't it let me move it? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's that? <laughs> but no, but I want to be able to slide it up and down. Um, it, I used to... It, uh. No, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't like that, but okay. So when this rock comes down and hits this, uh, this particle, right, it's going to cause it to go, back, go down. 
but it's connected to other things, right? That want other particles, other molecules that want to pull it back up. So it's going to go here, right? It's going to slide back up, and it's going to have this vibratory, simple harmonic motion, okay? Well, this thing is connected to other things, right? It's connected to other molecules. So when this one moves, the other one moves. And then the uh, chain reaction down the line moves as well. So that we see this go up and up and down and there's friction in there. So that's why it eventually stops. But it causes the, that motion to go through the line. And it's because of the energy that gets transferred from the rock to the particle and then all the other particles as it goes down the line. Okay? But, and this is the crazy thing, this thing never moves with the wave. So it's not like this particle, right, decides to, you know, go... Order. It didn't give it to me. So it's not like when this rock hits the particle, the particle doesn't go down that with the wave. Okay? It doesn't happen. It can only do this. And if you think about it, the disturbance is only pushing down. So how could you have a force being applied downwards on the particle cause the particle to go that way? doesn't make sense, right? Right? So... It's because everything is linked together that when this goes down, it causes a chain reaction in all the other ones, and that's what causes the wave to travel this way because of the chain reaction of the thing going, of the energy of the wave going through it. Yeah. So does it like, cause other particles to move? Yeah, because yeah, they're all linked. That one particle doesn't move, but then well, the other particles also just go up and down as well. Okay. Up and down, up and down like that. Yep. What happens when all the energy It depends on where what is at the end. So if it hits like a, a if we're talking about say let's say like a lake with a dam, mm -hmm. if it hits the dam, right, it may bounce back. And then it goes. Yeah, but you're gonna lose one. You lose energy as it's being transferred because of friction between all the particles, right? And you're gonna lose some when you hit the wall, right? Because it's gonna be an inelastic collision, so you're gonna lose some 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 energy there. But yeah, if it's just like an ocean wave and there's nothing hard, it'll just, it'll just go through and then it can, you know, then it can get sucked back a little bit and, it, and now we're getting like really crazy. <laughs> Dan? It can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really interesting. There's a cool, if, if anyone ever really wants, is interested in it, there's a cool book called The Wave. Um, I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Um, is this woman, uh, author named Susan Casey. Um, she's, written, uh, she's written three books. I've, I've read them all because she does a really cool, she has a really cool way of writing where she finds like a really interesting topic and she looks at it from two points of view that you don't think are connected. Um, so this book, The Wave, she becomes really interested in like rogue waves and why waves work the way they work and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of wave science and how come out of nowhere we can get like 80 foot, 100 foot waves, right? And how come some places in the world seem to be more predisposed to rogue waves and these killer waves as other places, okay? So she looked at it from that point of view, but then what she does is she connects it with surfers who are trying to ride these crazy waves. I have not seen that, no. So, so, all right, I know you guys are trying to do the wave. Um, so, one of the things that's really interesting is that they have found that these waves, some of these crazy waves, right, they actually, uh, first of all, like, scientists don't understand waves very well. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. When you talk about like ocean waves, it's, it's pretty much impossible for scientists to predict these crazy killer waves. Because there's so much that goes into in terms of currents and other waves, and you throw wind in there, and that messes things up. Um, you know, the, the, so, they think that these waves, uh, waves essentially, they follow quantum mechanical um, theories. So it's kind of, it's weird to think that that, it's, it's really cool though. Um, but it, again, it's cool because they, she links these big waves to surfers and how surfers are trying to ride these crazy, huge waves. Um, you know, there's one, there's one place 
um, off the coast of like Mexico. It's called um, the Cortez Bank. And it will put up 80 to 100 foot waves. And to give you an idea of how big and how fast these things are, um, uh, an 80 foot wave has more energy in it than the city of San Francisco would use in a year. Okay? The surfers, when you're going on these waves, when they're riding a wave that's, say, 80 feet tall, you're traveling so fast that the fins in your surfboard are actually causing the water to boil. It's called cavitation. So you're actually boiling the water because of the friction between the fins and the wave. Right? And that's, that is really, that's actually really bad. Because what happens is now... You have no friction between the waves, so you're actually slowing down, and you're going up the wave. So when the wave crests and comes down, and you're going up the wave, that's a really bad thing. Because you're traveling 80 miles an hour on this wave, and you're going the way wrong direction. But you slow down, right? You slow down at some point because it, you know, you're, just, you're slowing down because of the, now there's nothing. Finally, you slow down, and the water stops boiling. Um, Wait, and you go. No, 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 no. We're talking like fins. No, 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 no. I mean, it's it's like a very minuscule spot. So. Um, I I don't know like how scientists do it, but I know that the surfers will actually be like. I'm slowing down. Why am I going this way as I'm falling down a cliff? How come I'm falling essentially up a cliff? So, like, do they feel like the yeah. heat? Yeah, they can't move. No, they don't feel heat, but, like, they can't move. Uh, right? Because there's no friction now between them, and you need that friction to be able to move. Uh, okay. Right? It's nuts. Let me, let's, if you want, we'll talk at the end of class if you want to get more into stuff like that, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so, shh, again, the energy gets transferred, but not the particle. The particle just moves up and down and creates a chain reaction. If this is this related to this, yes. If it has to do with surfing, we'll talk later. What's that? Shh. Right. Yeah. And everything that we do with, again, in physics land is frictionless. Um, so, all right, so there are a few different types of waves. There are many, a few different types of waves, right? Okay. The first ones we have, we could talk about, are electromagnetic waves. Okay. Now, electromagnetic waves is a catch-all phrase for x-rays, radio waves, microwaves, right? Visible light, right? Ultraviolet, infrared, okay? Those are all forms of what we say are electromagnetic waves, okay? Yes, the whole spectrum thing that you've seen from like zero to however many nanometers of wavelength, things like that, okay? So, electromagnetic waves we're not going to talk about, we're not going to worry about, all right? But it's a big catch-all for a lot of different things that we, we've heard before, okay? The... F Big waves that we'll talk about are transverse waves, the first one, right? And in a transverse wave, all right, in a transverse wave, the motion of the wave is perpendicular to the disturbance. All right, so again, the motion of the wave is perpendicular to the disturbance. So that means the disturbance will go up and down, the wave goes left or right. Okay, so in a transverse wave, your wave would look just like what we would know. Okay, what we think of transverse wave and ocean wave. Do we know that for sure, though? Yeah. So, 
you know, you see waves come into the shore. They come this way, right? Towards you. The water molecules are doing this. Uh, in that, it could be earth, an earthquake thousands of miles away. It's the wind will create waves by pushing on it, and they cause circular motion, which can create them. It's Right. Okay? So we're going to deal mostly with transverse waves. We've seen a lot of it already. Okay? But again, the most important thing, again, is that in a transverse wave, the motion of the wave is perpendicular to the disturbance. So your speed may be this way while your disturbance is up and down. Okay? The next kind we may see and we'll talk about is a longitudinal wave. Okay? And in a longitudinal wave, the wave... Travels perpendicular to the distance. Uh, parallel, yes, I'm sorry. It's a symbol for parallel. Longitudinal. Longitudinal wave, right? The wave travels parallel to the disturbance. This one is, this one's hard to draw. So I, I do the best I can, but it's kind of hard to draw. So imagine, the way I'm going to draw it, imagine is almost like a slinky, right? And what you would do is you would, instead of waving the slinky like this to create a transverse wave, you would take the slinky and like bunch it up and then let it go, okay? So what you would see is you would see some coils really tight and then some coils that were farther apart and then you see some really tight coils and then you would see coils that are farther apart, okay? It's kind of hard to draw, but you would have, again... You squish it this way, right? And when you let it go, you're going to see this compression, right? You're going to see waves that have compression where the coils are squished close together while others are stretched apart. Okay? If, if you were able to, if you just do one and let it go, it's just one. But if you're able to squish and let go, squish and let go, squish and let go like that, you would get something like this. Right. Okay? Or if you just had like, if you took, had like a slinky on a motor and the motor just went like this, you would create longitudinal waves like that would look like this, okay? The best example of longitudinal waves is sound. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Because what you're doing is, if you think of a speaker, a speaker creates a sound wave by having the cone push on the air. Right? So what it's doing is when it pushes the air, it's compressing it. And then the pressure in the, in the air molecules causes it to expand, which then compresses these molecules, and then it expands, and it goes down the line like that. So sound waves are longitudinal waves. Okay? And it's... Yeah, it's just kind of hard. You wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about how to draw them. In your book, it looks just like this. Just with a, a nicer drawing, but like this. So in this, again, the motion is this way while the disturbance is also this way. Okay? And the last thing we'll talk about, and you guys pr pretty much already know it, but it's good to put it down there. Let's say we have a wave, right? A nice transverse wave, right? Okay? There's a couple parts of the wave that you need to know, okay? This is your amplitude, right? Your amplitude is the distance from your equilibrium point to the peak, okay? This is your wavelength. Okay? Your wavelength, we use the letter, the Greek letter lambda. It's like an upside down Y. Okay? We use the Greek letter lambda to describe wavelength. Okay? Wavelength is the distance between identical points on a wave. All right? So it's the distance for one wave, the length of one wave. Okay? Does that make sense? All right? 
So you could measure it from like peak, if there's a peak over here, you can measure peak to peak, that would be a wavelength, right? Valley to valley, that's a wavelength. Right, zero point to zero point over there, one wavelength, all right? So you can measure it anywhere, all right? Those are going to be like the big important things that we talk about, especially wavelength. That's really important, right? It's going to be wavelength and frequency, all right? So the last thing I want to do is I want to look at how do we figure out how fast a wave is traveling, okay? We know very basically that speed is distance divided by time, right? Makes sense, right? Okay. Well, if I'm talking about how far one wave moves, what would we call that? The distance that one wave travels. It would just be wavelength, right? The wavelength would be the distance that one wave travels, right? Okay. So we can call it wavelength, right? Now, this is periodic motion. So that means we're going to get a one wave. It's going to be the same every time, right? So instead of time, we would call it period, right? Capital T. Okay. Now, this is, this is nice, but to make it a little better, to make it look more elegant, right? And really to put it more in terms of, right, things that we'd use. Instead of using period, what is one over period? Frequency. Frequency, right. Oops, we don't want that. Or let's write it in a way that you'll see it. F lambda. Okay. So this is what this would be the speed of a wave. Okay? The speed of a wave depends on its frequency and its wavelength. All right? If we're talking about something like sound, this number is always going to be the same. This number will always be the same. It's about 340 meters per second. Changes with temperature, but it doesn't, but that's it, right? It's all sound waves travel at the same speed. The things, that, uh, the things that affect it are then its frequency and its wavelength. And you can see that they're inversely proportional, right? One goes up, the other has to go down because this number always needs to be the same. Same thing with light. Light travels at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, right? So light, all light waves, all visible light waves travel at this speed, okay? That means we change the colors. The colors that we see get changed because the frequency changes. And because the frequency changes, then the wavelength of the wave changes. Okay?